What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my guide to Frederick the first in Rise of Kingdoms. So this is episode two of my legendary investment tier list series. Episode one was on El Cid, and we're going to be following the exact same rules and guidelines for Frederick in this video. If you guys want a quick reference for Frederick, there will be a link in the description to the riseofkingdoms.org guide for Frederick, and it should summarize most of the things that we talk about in this video. With all that being said, Frederick the first is a leadership conquering and skill based legendary commander. You can get sculptures of Frederick from golden chests in the tavern you can also get him in the expedition metal shop he's relatively rare to appear there you can also convert your universal legendary commander sculptures into frederick which i do not recommend that you do let's take a look at frederick's skills so we can get a little bit of a better idea of what exactly he's doing as a commander his first skill is called barbarossa and it has a rage requirement of a thousand it says for the next three seconds each attack has an 80 percent chance to deal extra damage to the target with a damage factor of 800 so what this means is when his active skill goes off, each attack for the next three seconds has an 80% chance to deal 800 damage factor and a 20% chance of dealing zero damage factor. So if you're lucky and you hit that 800 damage factor each turn for the whole three turns, that means you're dealing 2,400 damage factor to the target, which is huge. If you're insanely, incredibly, crazy unlucky, you could possibly deal zero damage factor with this active skill. Now, if you do the math, over time, roughly Frederick will deal about 1,920 damage factor to a target. That's essentially what this is equivalent to with that probability built in. What that means is that he still, his, he still does a crazy amount of single target damage for a legendary commander, even when you compare him to some of the older or the, some of the newer legendaries, uh, he, his single target damage factor is actually really, really high. His second skill is called Never Give Up, and it says the normal attacks of troops led by this commander have a 10% chance to heal a portion of slightly wounded units with a healing factor of a thousand. This effect can only trigger once every five seconds. This is actually a pretty strong healing factor. I know it's only a 10% chance, but usually it takes about 10 turns, maybe nine turns for an active skill to go off in a regular fight anyway. So if we we look at Richard, for example, his primary skill has a 1400 healing factor, and we know that that's going to go off roughly once every nine turns or so. And so, you know, with this being a 10% chance, that means it'll go off roughly once every 10 turns, potentially a little bit less because of that internal cooldown. But regardless, uh, it's, it's not as good as Richard. Absolutely not, but it's still a pretty good healing factor nonetheless. So this should help you a decent amount in open field fights and in Canyon. His third skill is called invasion. It just straight up increases all your damage by 10% when attacking a city. Pretty straightforward there. And his fourth skill, King of Deutschland. Troops led by this commander gain 15% increased troop capacity. That's one of the highest troop capacities in the game. So really good stuff there. And his expertise basically converts his primary skill into pure damage factor. So it changes that 80% to 100%, which means every single time that his active skill goes off, he's going to be dealing 800 damage factor per turn for three turns, which is a total of 2,400 single target damage factor, which is very, very good. Now being a leadership commander, you're essentially not seeing any stats here. You're not seeing any stats. Look at every single one of the skills. You don't see any increases in attack, defense, health, skill damage. You're not getting any buffs from Frederick the first at all. So really what you have here is a lot of troops, super high single target damage factor, and a little bit of healing. And unfortunately, that's it. Now we're going to break down Frederick into all seven categories, but real quick, I wanted to show you two talent builds that you could do if you're going to use Frederick as a primary commander. And, and honestly, you're probably never going to use him as a primary commander. So you really don't have to worry about this too much. This build is what I would use if you're going to be open field fighting or in Canyon again with Frederick as primary, very unlikely, but this is what you could go ahead and do. You can go and basically go full all in on that skill tree because that's all that you really have with Frederick is that skill damage, which is nice. You get the extra troop capacity over here. There's a little bit of rage regeneration over here. Overall, this is like the best that I could do. Now, technically you could do a mixed army rally with Frederick. This is the build you could use for that. I actually got this build from Legend Roni, so shout out to him. But uh, again, don't rally with Frederick primary. 
With skills and talents out of the way, let's talk about Frederick as an open field commander. Not caring about troop type and being able to bring 15% more troop capacity makes him a really good candidate for a secondary commander. He also has that healing, which gives you a little bit of survivability in the open fields. And again, if he's expertise, he does have one of the highest single target damage factors in the game. So because of those reasons, we're going to give Frederick actually a B in the open field category, which is one of the highest categories categories that he actually ranks in. When it comes to rallying objectives, Frederick does have that damage factor, which we talk about a lot in this video. He does have the leadership and conquering tree and the rage engine from the skill tree, but he doesn't have any stats for your troops. You're not getting any attack, defense, health, anything like that. So with that being said, you could use him for a rally. He gets a C in this tier, but really there's so many better options. Now for those same reasons, rallying cities is actually a slightly better choice for Frederick because of this third skill, you do elevate all your damage by 10%. So it's possible that you could use him in that scenario, which makes him slightly better at rallying cities, putting him at a B tier in this category. But again, there's a reason that you don't ever see it, right? You never see a Frederick rally on a city. You never see a Frederick rally on an objective. You have way better options, but you could do it. The next two categories are defending objectives and defending cities. Frederick fails miserably at both of those things. He doesn't provide you any stats. He doesn't have the garrison tree. He doesn't have the defense tree. Uh, he's actually healing your troops, which means you're going to take, you're going to fill your hospital faster. Don't ever use Frederick in a defensive scenario. He gets a D for both of those categories. As far as Canyon performance goes, this is very similar to his open field performance, except that 15% extra troop capacity is really nice, especially in Canyon, because you know that your troops are going to fight to the death. So being able to bring more troops than your enemy really does help you out a ton. And the fact that you could technically get Frederick 5511 for free from gold keys over time does make him kind of like a an easy shoe in to your final slot if you just don't know who to pair with your fifth army or something you could throw frederick in there and he wouldn't be terrible so for those reasons and the same reasons that he's decent in the open field frederick gets a b in this category as well finally as far as pve content barbarians and forts are concerned frederick doesn't really offer anything here other than that damage factor and healing and so he gets a C for this category. He doesn't have any march speed. He doesn't have the peacekeeping tree. He doesn't deal extra damage to barbarians. He doesn't give you more experience. Uh, you could throw him in there to kill barbs, but I just don't see a great reason why you would, unless you just don't really have any other better options, in which case, sure. Overall, Frederick's most important thing is his expertise, which makes him an insanely expensive commander to expertise, and you're really not getting much value in return for that investment. And because of that, Frederick is overall a D tier legendary commander. It's just very hard to think of a good scenario to use Frederick. I guess the only cool little pairing I can think of would be like an expertise Genghis Khan with a Frederick secondary, just bringing a ton of cavalry. And, you know, as long as people leave you alone in the open field, then you could just absolutely melt people. But the problem is most people see a con and they go for it because it doesn't have any stats either. So, yeah, I just I don't know, guys. With that being said, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really does help out the channel a ton. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. Comment down below your thoughts on Frederick. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this commander. Am I missing some obvious pairing, some obvious combo? He truly is a pre KVK one commander. Just don't really see the value in it. Like I said earlier, there will be a written guide to Frederick in the description below, riseofkingdoms.org. Make sure you check that out and all the other guides that I have written on there already. As always, my social media links are in the description below, so make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, everywhere. It's always in the description. And finally, there's a link down in the description to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Blue Stacks, and it's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. Like I said, it's free, so go ahead and try it out. I think it's something that you might actually like. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.